in control, that you are almighty and you are all powerful. And we do put all things in your hands. Lord, we just pray that you, you be with all those in this country that are looking, that are searching, and help us to be that light on a hill. Through Lord, we just pray that you, you bless those uh, in this country that uh, are, are struggling. And we know there are many in many different ways. We just pray that we all have the tenderness, that we have the focus to, to help them. We pray that they, they find Christ. We pray that we have a hand in that. Help us know how to do that. Once again, our prayer this evening is for our community, and we're thankful to be able to live here, and we're thankful to be able to live in this country. Guide us and direct us. Help us always to be yours and to glorify you in all that we do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I continue in our prayer service, I'll be praying for the church. If you would bow with me, please. Father, we are grateful for the church, the body of your people. Father, we're thankful for the great sacrifice that was offered so that we might have an avenue to make our lives right and be restored back to a relationship with you. And Father, as we are thinking about the church, the redeemed, those who have been purchased with such a great price, Father, we're thankful for the opportunity and the privilege to be called your children. Father, we ask that you would be with all the bodies of your people that meet together the world over 
on this first day of the week as we glorify you and sing songs of praise to you and study from your word and remember Jesus and the great sacrifice that he offered on our behalf as we partake of communion with one another. Father, we know that Satan is powerful, and that he roams about looking for who he might be able to devour. Father, we are mindful that there is much evil in this world. There are many temptations and trials. And Father, we need to trust in you and put our confidence in you and turn to you so that you can give us the strength and the courage that we need to persevere and be the type of people you want us to be. Father, we're especially mindful of the body of people that meet here at this place at Oldham Lane. Father, we pray that we collectively, all together, that we might truly be a shining light in a dark world. That we might join together as individual members that make up a body, that we might function together, that we might help each other as we all strive to do what you want us to do with our lives. Because we know, Father, that we sin and we fall short so many times, and, but we have each other to turn to to help us to make things right and to continue on the journey that we are on. Father, we pray that as we labor together here at this place that we might not lose focus upon what our mission is, that we might always be seekers of those who do not know you, and that because of the light that we shine forth, we might have the ability to share with others the great hope that's found in your Son. Father, we ask that you would help us as we strive each and every day to serve you, that we might not just think about serving you one day a week or maybe two days a week, but serving you each and every day and be grateful for the opportunity that we have to serve you. We know that the world says that surrendering to anything else is bad, but we understand, Father, that you want us to surrender totally to you, and it's a good thing that you'll watch over us, that you care for us, you love us, and that you do the things that will help us as we strive to live a life worthy of the sacrifice of your Son. Father, we're thankful for this body of people. We're thankful for the opportunity that we have to encourage one another and to lift each other up. And help us, Father, as we strive to be that shining light in a dark world, that we might always be able to stand for you and do the things that you've asked us to do. Father, we love you and we ask that you would always continue to watch over us and give us the strength and the courage that we need, Father. We ask these things to your Son and our Savior. Amen. Mm -hmm. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what a dear to stay there. All because we do not carry. 
Good evening, everyone. So good to have everybody here. We have some visitors. Thank you, Don. Good to see you. Uh, just thank you for being here with us tonight. Thank you for all the men that have led prayers, uh, starting with our Q Packers. Our little boys do such a good job. You can tell it's right out of their heart. And, and the prayers that have been led tonight, just thank you so much. Doesn't seem like very long ago that we were doing this, does it? A year ago, we had this prayer service. Uh, time goes so quickly. You know, I have a feeling that uh, a lot of people in this audience tonight have some type of ranching or farming in their family history. Our farm in Trent has been in the family for about 75 years and the one in Stith over 80 years. I've spent many a hot and cold, dusty hour on a 720 John Deere, some of you know, know as a Poppin' Johnny. And I have, I have hoed many thousands of rows of cotton. Each year I try to go to the Big Country Farm and Ranch Show just because of the farming background I have in my, in my blood. But I have to warn you, be careful if you go there and sign up for anything because you never know what you're going to get in the mail. Uh, I've been receiving successful farming for about the last four or five years. And I'm pretty proud to get this, to be honest with you. I was thumbing through this August edition and I saw an article that caught my eye. And I'd like to read the first, a couple of the first two or three paragraphs to you. Three ways to handle tough times. Stress goes hand in hand with farming and ranching. It's built into the natural rhythms we live in. Unpredictable weather, livestock that sometimes decides to live by its own rules, and plants that get derailed by disease, drought, rain, are cold. Sometimes the stress outweighs the rewards, bogging us down in emotional burdens. Most are precipitated by circumstances beyond our control, causing those feelings of helplessness that are particularly detrimental to emotional well-being. If, if you do have farming in your background, you can understand that pretty, pretty easily. But you know, as I read that, it sounded like life in general to me, not just farming and ranching. So I'd like to reread this and put, substitute a couple of things in there. Stress goes hand in hand with life. It's built into the natural rhythms we live in. Unpredictable weather, children that sometimes decide to live by their own rules, and jobs that get derailed by the economy, sickness, disability, or death. Fit pretty well, didn't it? But I have to say, we are such a blessed people. And so much that I sometimes feel guilty and ashamed when I complain about just about anything. But life is anything but simple. Tonight we've prayed for students, for teachers, for community, for country. And in a few minutes, we'll pray for people with health issues and those that have lost loved ones. Now for the three answers in the article. And I wanna, I wanna associate those with scripture, if you don't mind. The first they say is to control your attitude and mindset. And my answer to that is found in Philippians 4, 8 through 9. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence, and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Number two, control response to stress. You know, when I thought about this, I thought about David and his con his uh, response to stress in Psalms, how many prayers 
over and over. I've just selected parts of two that, that he offered up to God. In Psalms 86, 1 through 13. Incline thine ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am afflicted and needy. Do preserve my soul, for I am a godly man. O thou my God, save thy servant who trusts in thee. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to thee I cry all day long. Make glad the soul of thy servant, for to thee, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and abundant in loving kindness to all who call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and give heed to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble I shall call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. There is no one like thee among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any words like thine. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and they shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and dost wondrous deeds, thou alone art God. Teach me thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will give thanks to thee, O Lord my God, with all of my heart, and will glorify thy name forever. For thy forgiveness toward me is great, and thou hast delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. And then in Psalm 6, 1 through 7. O Lord, do not rebuke me in thine anger, nor chasten me in thy wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am pining away. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are dismayed, and my soul is greatly dismayed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, rescue my soul. Save me because of thy loving kindness, for there is no mention of thee in death, in Sheol, who will give thee thanks. I am weary with my sighings. Every night I make my bed swim. I dissolve my couch with my tears. My eye has wasted away with grief. It has become old and because of my adversaries. And the last way to handle stress, they say, is to control events within your setting. So I think that means make good decisions. In Proverbs 2, 1 through 7, My son, if you will receive my sayings and treasure my commandments within you, make your ear attentive to wisdom. Incline your heart to understanding. For if you cry for discernment, lift your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. For his mouth, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to all those who walk in his integrity. And then in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. You know, we have three ways to handle stress. The Bible, prayer, and God's wisdom. You know, I believe the, the greatest strength that Oldham Lane Church of Christ has is that it's a family, a family that believes in God, a family that worships God, and a family that obeys God. And this morning at the end of Chris's invitation, he made a plea that there is a family here that cares about you. There is a family that is here that wants to help you. And that same plea is tonight. Uh, for any reason at all, if you have a need, I'd, I'd invite you to come tonight as we stand to sing and let this family help you. Mm -hmm. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There are precious fountains brings to all.
like James uh, said, we're a family and family sticks together through thick and thin. And uh, some of our congregation has been through a lot of thin lately and is our custom on Sunday evening to specifically pray for members of our congregation, special friends and other family members. And uh, many of those are listed in your bulletin, so be sure and you get that and keep those people continuously on your prayer list. There are a couple more I'm going to be adding to that. James read from Proverbs and Psalms, and that tells us so many things about life and death. And so I looked up Psalms 90, verse 10, and it says, The days of our years are three score and ten. And if by some reason strength they be four score, yet there is strength, labor, and sorrow, and is soon cut off, and we will fly away. Those of our number that we need to remember are Richard Campbell for Forrest Caton, who is a very new Christian, for the families of Lynn Hickey and Fonda Mayo, for Miss Lottie McCaleb, for Ina Beth, for Lisa Rhodes, that is uh, Nita Potts' sister, for KC and Linda Weidman, that's Chance's mom, and we're going to add uh, Dale Rollins from San Angelo, who is an uh, acquaintance of uh, Mr. Haley, Rob Haley, and uh, has some health issues at this time. And he, we, we need to remember specifically uh, Bonnie Bedner and her family as uh, she is going through this hospice care. So let's keep all of these members and their families in our prayers and let's uh, go, all go together united in this one effort, please. Fathers, we come before your throne in mercy and grace. We thank you for your son who died on the cross and gave us victory over sin and death. And yes, Father, we do fear death. And we love you and we thank you for the sacrifice of your son who conquered that death on the cross. Father, the individuals that we mentioned and their families, we ask for strength. We ask for endurance as they go through these very tough times as Lynn Hickey and Fonda Mayo were called home this last week. And Bonnie, is being called home now. Thank you for the strength and courage that you've given these families. And we ask a measure of healing on those members that are going through health problems and cancer treatment. We ask a special prayer for their caregivers as they need to be encouraged and strengthened during this very difficult time. But we also need to remember that there is victory in death that has been given to us from your son Jesus. We cannot thank you enough. We did not earn it. We do not deserve it. But we thank you for that fateful decision that your son made on the cross. So we will have the opportunity for eternal life. In his precious name we pray. Amen.
What a blessing to be here this evening. Um, if you did not get a chance to take communion, it's uh, been prepared down the hall. As uh, we stand and sing here in a second, if you'll just head down the hall, uh, there will be people to direct you, and you can take the Lord's Supper. Let's stand and sing this final song. Uh, before we get to the second slide, uh, I want to remind you two things. Uh, the second slide, Cameron, go ahead and go to it. Uh, it says, there are sweet expressions on each face. I also want to remind you that um, lying is a sin. So, <laughs> <laughs> there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know. Have a great week.